All right, guys, welcome back. So we are back with another episode of our Lethal Zone Guide. Um, I, again, I want to thank everybody for how much love and support you guys have been showing this uh, series. It's been it's been awesome. I'm glad that it's helping out so many people. And um, we're going to go get that fuel today. But uh, first things first, let's get her on base defense. Swamp her for... Um... So uh, one of the things you need to start doing, too, as you're progressing through the game is uh looking at your your survivor skills and seeing how close they are to leveling up when you're going out and about so like this guy he's real real low on almost everything like he's not close to ranking up anything i see this guy high pain threat so just keep going he's kind of our play guard killer um and he's almost maxed out on fighting he's about to specialize so uh, i'm like you know what let's grab this guy and um because he is our gardener he is slightly more expendable than my cook uh but yeah we're gonna grab him and he's gonna be the one that i uh i bring out because we need to do a little bit of fighting with him we do a little bit of fighting with him we'll get him leveled up uh and he'll become that much better of a survivor okay so let's see here let's drop this in there grab both of our guns now we got a couple of good things to talk about um some of you guys have been asking some real good questions, bringing up some real good points in the comments. Um, so I'm going to try my best to uh, address hey, you lend us a hand with something, we'd really owe you one. address some of the uh, the questions that you guys ask. Okay, that should be more than enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. Um, but somebody asked me my thoughts on the um, Red Talon facilities, like the Red Talon workshop uh, and stuff like that. And I think they are phenomenal, phenomenal facilities. I think getting Red Talon survivors in your community is phenomenal. But the, the main reason why I haven't done it, because people ask why I wasn't doing it in this playthrough, is because I wanted this guide to kind of be something that anybody could kind of pick up and follow without having to do very much in, in the way of, like, grinding um, some kind of outside source of uh, currency like uh the uh what the hell is it called there the prestige i, I could i want to keep saying influence and i'm like it's not fucking influence i'm dropping this stuff off real quick shit um and i'm gonna grab some gas but yeah i, I wanted this guy to be something that most people could kind of just pick up and, and start following without having to go out of their way to you know okay well yeah i could follow this guy but now i gotta go grind daybreak or base sieges on another community for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and you know that's not practical you know what i mean so that was the main reason why i didn't but i mean i have some prestige points so i mean i could go and and, and buy that stuff i will showcase uh right now for those of you guys who are wondering what i'm referring to is uh they have a currency in the game called prestige which when you play the daybreak game mode which is the wave mode and um or the horde mode in state of decay uh as you beat it and complete uh higher tiers and stuff like that you unlock um weapons and facilities and all this really really cool red talent stuff uh and then once you have those points built up here you can come in your main community bring up your radio menu scroll on to the bottom where it says daybreak and you can recruit the red talon uh soldiers to play with they are very very good uh but as you can see they cost 2750 or you can call in the prestige trader which is free to call the trader in but when the trader shows up you buy stuff from them using your prestige they sell things like all the guns that you use in daybreak which are they like cleo weapons they have Cleo guns, Cleo melee weapons, Red Town facilities like the workshop, the 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 barracks, um, officers quarters, the tree. Like there's some really really powerful stuff tied to Daybreak that can really make your like the Red Town workshop is. Uh, if, if there was one thing, uh, I would advise you guys to get from Daybreak, it would be the Red Town workshop because it's an automatic level three workshop, which isn't affected by the lethal zone costs. So, um, it's, I think it still only costs six, uh, materials to build. It's an automatic level three workshop with built-in power, regardless of what your base has. It has power automatically built into it, this workshop, and it passively repairs all of your weapons in the locker over time. So you don't have to invest parts into anything. So it is very, very powerful. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be heading over here. 
Uh, to, I'm gonna kind of scout the gas station, making sure we're not setting off any screamers. Okay, triple bloater right there. We're gonna want to take care of them, just because when we come back through this area. We don't, we don't want to hit them. Okay, so we should be still be considered stealth right now. Nope. Okay, so we're not considered stealth right now. You see how the play card stirred when I did that? Um, okay. So we're gonna have to, that play we're gonna have to leave them. Now I can get a little closer here. It actually looks quite clear. I don't know why I wasn't considered stealth right there. Um, might need to use a crossbow. All right, so I'm going to go in on foot to get closer to this us uh, for the same reasons that I tell you guys. Screamer. That was close. The, that would have woke up the play cart right there. Um, but yeah, for the same reason, if you drive in here, you're going to aggro up everything. Being in plague territory, I don't want to wake up a heart. So we're just going to move low and slow. We got real lucky with that screamer right there. Audio cues, though. I heard it. I heard it in my left ear. Gurgling. Here for a job. Time to do it. Please just be in here, dude. Not bad. Okay, so just a normal gas can there. Um... Crapola. So if there is fuel here, it's probably inside the building. Um, doesn't seem like there's very many zombies in the building from what I can see from through the glass. So we can get in here, we can loot. Now I told you guys a couple episodes ago, you can loot play cart buildings as long as you don't hit the play cart. You're not going to set it off by getting too close or anything like that. You can just... Come in, do what you gotta do. Molly. Okay, where's this third container? See what I'm saying? You could walk literally right up to the play cart and it doesn't matter. As long as you don't hit it. Hmm. So I'm not seeing any containers in here, which I'm thinking maybe the containers in the back or on the roof. Not there, so it has to be on the roof. Oh, nope. Right there. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I told you guys I wanted to get the fuel today. Um, now we got two more spots that we're going to hit. One of them is um, right here. But I think this is going to be in a, Yeah, this is in a different play cards territory. So um, I think this one that we're at right now is the one that stirred from those bloaters. Let me see. Yeah, definitely this one is the one that stirred from those bloaters. So once we're out of the territory, we won't have to sweat it waking up. We got a couple zombies outside the the car. Might not seem like a big deal, but in that the grin. Screamer calls its friends. I'm in trouble. Yeah, those three screamers. We got to we got to get in the car and get moving before they get here. And there's one over here on the other side of the wall. Now, I am waiting because it's inevitable, guys. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen at some point. We're going to wake up a play cart and uh, 
when that happens, I will show you guys, you know, how to respond. What do we do if we wake up a plague heart? But I will continue to keep trying to play without waking one up, obviously. Okay, so this is the furthest that we've ventured away from base. Uh, like I told you guys, you don't start pushing out all across the map because the last thing you want to do is, like, be in the beginning stages of this game and wake up a play card over here. Like, it will really make things difficult for you um, <laughs> going forward because now you got to try to figure out how to get in there, clear that play card out. Um, or you're just gonna have infestations all over your map. It's just it gets Until really really messy heart, this place can't really be secured and I And I know it's hard because a lot of the times we're tempted because we know like oh I know there's a police station over on that side of the map um, And I can go in there and get guns Uh, but it's just a risk, you know what I mean? Like, if you're all the way over here, and you come up here and you wake up play cards, and I'll say there's two or three of them overlapping, too, and you, and you know, you, if you kill one, you'll wake up the other one. Now you're just, you're in trouble, because now all those, that heart over here is going to just start spreading. It's going to have infestations all over the place, and one play card can make, generate quite a few infestations by itself. And, um... Uh, the infestations get really nasty. You're gonna have juggernauts, plague ferals. You could have up to two plague ferals in one level three infestation. So you'll have a juggernaut, two plague ferals, uh, a bloater, and a screamer. Now that's that's trouble for most new players in Lethal Zone. I mean, it's trouble for most players in Lethal Zone. Anyways, like two plague ferals, two to three plague ferals is messy. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's just something that you want to try to avoid the best you can. So let's get the fuel out of here. There's a blue bag down there, too. I don't know what's in that. So we're going to go check it. There it is. Like, I'm even overextending a little bit here, but we need the fuel. Um, I showed you guys there's ways to get guns oh, without going across the map. Uh, the only reason you're going to start venturing outside of your comfort zone is if... It is just something you need to do. Like, okay, man, listen, I need the food, bro. I got, like, well, food you could probably play around, but, like, fuel, it is a lot harder to, uh, to play around. This stuff looked useful, so I brought it home. Uh, but even if so, like, I didn't push across the map. I just pushed right to the edge of, like, my comfort zone, just to where we needed to go, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go. Now, oh, yeah, there's warehouses down here that have fuel. Yeah, now you're... You're overextending a bit if you're trying to go way down here, but like here, you know what I mean? We're, we're right on the edge of my zone of operation. Okay, so we're doing all right. We got two bags of fuel so far. Uh, that one enclave is still asking for fuel, so we're going to be giving them one of our three bags. Hopefully, we get a third bag out of here. Oh, and there's a car there. Yeah. All right. And let me see how far this is. So realistically... Uh, I, I tell you guys, it's it's all about noise generation. You have to think noise generation. Now, let me know in the comments or right now in the live chat, if you're watching this, um, how many of you guys would have gotten in your car and just drove down the hill here to go into this to get your stuff? A lot of us would have. But it's one of those things I want you guys thinking. Driving down there, I'm going to aggro zombies. It's literally right there. So we're just going to walk. All right. This is something that you guys got to get a bit more comfortable doing is just moving on foot trying to stay quiet uh, because if you would have drove all three of those zombies would have followed you over here and you would have had to fight them fight them or you would have had to try to break line of sight and run away from them I want to check the condition of this road racer too uh, we'll check the trunk
a snack. Uh, obviously needs fuel. Now, I had somebody ask me in, in the comments, you know, when should they consider moving? Um, I tell people that the reason why we picked this map um, is because you don't have to rush moving. The starter base is, uh, this starter base is so powerful, so powerful. Kitchen, six beds. You can hold up six survivors in here comfortably. Um, three small slots. The only thing we're lacking in this space right now is a large slot. But early game, large slots are... You don't really... Feral. Okay, so I hear Feral. It's behind the shed. But if you look in here, guys, there is tons of zombies laying on the floor in there. Knowing that that Feral's there and these zombies are in there, there's a chance that going in that shed, they're all going to jump up at me and I don't have a crossbow. I can't use my gun because it's going to aggro that Feral. That shed is a no-go right now. Now, I, if I wanted to be cheek, I could whip a molly in there, but molotovs and fire and stuff like that doesn't count as stealth kills. So it's going to start putting pressure on that play cart, which, or uh, it's going to put stuff towards waking up the play cart. So what we need to do now is consider an alternate location. I hate to be that guy, but I got to ask how that favor's coming along. We could check this shed down here. Now the enclave, they want they want their fuel, um, so I think I'm gonna go drop it off to them right now. Right. Knew I should have done that. But. There's either a slaughterhouse or a plague heart nearby. Uh, but yeah, back to when to move. Um, move only when you need to. And that that generally, uh, that's going to be about mid-game. When, when it comes to starting, uh, you know, building uh, a leader facility or something like that where you need a large slot. Uh, a lot of the, like, the large slots, they're not necessary early game. They're more for like... Squaring away your end game type shit. Okay, so we can follow these train tracks all the way down and over to that enclave. And I'll just cut up around here. So now we're outside of Plague Territory, you can fight to our heart's content. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, so don't be in a rush to move bases. Um, the, the starter bases in this, in this map are plenty powerful enough for you to get most things that you need done. And then uh, once you got some Plague Territory squared away, um, and you're like, all right, you know, I'm ready to really grow and start pushing that mid game hard. Then that's when you you can you can uh, start considering moving bases. But right now, don't rush, guys. Uh, every base that you would that you could potentially move into right now would be a downgrade for you. And, I, sure. Thank you. and I'll show you why. Uh, so you could clear out this play cart and move into here. This, this has three small slots, just like the base that you have, but it has two watchtowers and uh, a thing of beds. So you're gonna lose, um, you're gonna lose beds, and you're gonna lose your kitchen facility that the um, that this base comes with built in. You're gonna lose that, um, and you're gonna lose your beds. Now, and these master built-in beds are better than the sheltered beds. Um, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna lose this, and you're gonna you're gonna get two watchtowers, but those don't really matter all that much if you're not waking up play cards anyways. And you're gonna gain a large facility or a large slot. So it's like you can build that base up to be on par with this, but that's about it. It's gonna be what you have right now with a large slot. That's it. Um, 
So it, it's, I wouldn't necessarily say moving here would be uh, something I was like pushing for. If anything, I would push to maybe move into a church on a hill. This one's a bit bigger. Um, you do gain, I think, two extra large slots here, or two extra small slots on top of the three. So this one is a bit of an upgrade. Um, corner office, you guys know how I feel about this one. I mean, it is a okay base now with the, with the outpost update, but it's still kind of meh. <laughs> but this base, um, it is kind of an upgrade. And then once you get into like self storage or more and more, like those are decent bases. Like this one we could move into for like right now, it's not in plague territory. Uh, and that's one of the things about the, uh, the older maps is you're almost guaranteed, I think one mid tier base outside of plague territory, the way they programmed it. Uh, I've had it though, to where I didn't, every base had a play cart on it in lethal, but the, where this one is located, there's not really a place for a play cart to even be. So, uh, but this is a pretty decent base to move into. Honestly, I was considering this one. Uh, it's nice and out of the way. It is an upgrade, but, uh, we'll kind of just feel out the playthrough. Uh, but yeah, don't rush, uh, to get out of your base. Because, uh, yeah, what you're going to gain isn't isn't really all that crazy. So this one, uh, this is going to make them allies, I believe. They want plague samples. I'm going to head back to my outpost real quick. I'm going to see how many I have floating around. I think you need three for this mission. Now we're scanning for screamers. All right, we're good. Now you see on my minimap, I have that that infestation symbol right there. That's a UI bug that will just happen sometimes. If you if it's really bothering you, just log out, log back in, it goes away. All right, so what are we looking at for samples? Uh, I got 11, so we'll grab three. It might be three or five. Let me grab five just in case. I, uh, now, I'm, now I don't know. Drive oh screamer, we want to stay wide, we don't want him to go off, and I'm about to drive down a hill. Right. Nice. Nice. So our base just found an extra fuel. Now, when it comes to normal zombies, I'm not worried about aggroing them. Because these guys will just fight them off. It, it was, but if the screamer screams, it's still that's still on me. Okay, so which one of you guys wanted it? Be careful out there. Be careful out there. There it is. Three. So it's three, not five. I owe you one. And now they are allies. Now care. they're giving us most radio cooldowns reduced, so a uh, providing relay service. So our radio uh, call ins, if we wanted to, you know, find resources, if we wanted, um, you know, any of this stuff, it's all on a reduced cooldown, which is cool. Good to see you. Uh, let's see what they have I for trade. Stuff to trade. Sure. Damn, got that good price on that AK now. Mm, nothing that we need at the moment, so we'll just save our save our money. Now, I wanted to push out and get more fuel, as you guys know. Um, the only issue is a lot of the areas that we're in currently uh, are a no-go. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive back to base, and then I'm going to I'm going to uh, contact the network. I'm going to show you guys how to m generate resources. So I'm just pushing them into each other, die. letting these people. Yo, stop shooting my car, though, dude. Seriously. I'm 
going to show you guys how to get get more resources um, in the early game if you are uh, starting to drain the area you're in. Now, it's a little inconsistent, but that's why I tell you to do it at your base. Because I believe radio cooldowns um, like this are dependent on where you are currently located as a player that spawns it within a vicinity. Got him. Uh, I think it spawns it within a vicinity of where you're located. Now, the radio is one of the... Okay, so Pharaoh will stop there. Yeah, he's not coming up. The radio, in my opinion, is one of the most underutilized... No, he is coming up. Okay. So here we go. So Pharaoh 1v1, chat. Um... This moment is going to happen at some point, guys, and you, you got to be ready for it. You got to you got to know what you can do, how to deal with it, because barrels, they are the bane of most people's existence. Like they, they can't stand them, especially lethals on the plague ferals. They, they really, really bother people. But what I'm showing you guys here is when you're fighting a feral, um, as long as you know you dodge right when you get to them, like you can just keep doing this and as long as you're not spam dodging you're doing it one by one and you're not sprinting you can regen your stamina and do this infinitely for the most part now if you notice ferals they run in a straight line right at you so what i want you guys to do is get a trash community or whatever or uh, when you do get a feral like this just practice this just getting used to the dodge the timing and lining them up because they will run in a straight line at you. And just, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm lining up. Dodge. Line them up. Dodge. Line them up. Dodge. Now, what you, when you, you, I always advise you guys, you can melee these. We'll get into that later. That's a bit more of an advanced thing. Um, but what I want you guys to do is when you get ferals, shoot them. Just sh shoot them. But how to shoot ferals calmly and accurate. You can take all three shots at once. Um, but I advise you guys to start off slow and kind of just focus on your your um, your shot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge. So what you're going to do is you're going to make that space. Let them line up. Get straight. Okay. Dodge. I missed. Take your time. Dodge. Line up that straight. Missed. There we go. Hit him once, and then dodge. Hit him again, and then dodge. I wasn't comfortable with how he was coming at me. He's doing his little loop-de-loop -loop there. I want him to come straight at me. He's not doing it right now. I think it might be because his helmet is broken. Nope. That's not it. You see what I'm saying? And you just keep dodging until you're comfortable to take the shot. And then you, you do it. So you, I just wanted to share some news with you. Mysterious Wandering Trader. Nice. So that that's a big one, guys. That's uh, something we'll get into. Uh, the thing with the Ferals is I, I feel like people rush, but they don't realize you you have all the time in the world, especially if it's just you 1v1 with the Feral. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to get Ferals 1v1 because they're so fast that you can kind of run, and the Feral will keep up with you, and all the other zombies will kind of lag behind. Uh, but, yeah, once you get the Feral 1v1... You just take your time, all right? Just keep dodging. It, it's okay. You're going to miss some shots. Um, and just shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge. All right? And then once once you're, you're comfortable to take the shot, take the shot. If not, then just wait, okay? Uh, I know some of you guys might be on controllers, so lining up, you know, the, the, the pinpoint accuracy. That's why I tried to tell you, show you guys how to dodge, line up your shot. And then this one was even a little weird because I was kind of on like an incline. If you're doing it on flat ground, um, it's a bit easier to line up your shots. But uh, yeah, that, that's how you can start uh, getting used to fighting ferals. It's just getting comfortable around them. All right, so we also just got the mysterious wandering trader. Now that is a big... Okay, so they want us to set up their still. Um, that, But the mysterious wandering trader is a big big 
mission, guys. Um, they're a big, big trader. He has some really, really good stuff. But uh, at the moment, I don't... How much influence do we have? Oh, we got we got a good bit of influence. I could afford something from him, but I oh, let's stick to the plan. First things first, fuel. We're gonna find. Uh, so what you do is you can come up here to the top of your radio command, and I, I was telling you guys, dude, the radio is super super underutilized. It's not very. The, the game doesn't put it in your face, so it's something that you could honestly play the game and not really know much about it. Um, <clears throat> but what you're gonna do. Is you can hit find resources. Uh, you can call in more enclaves like I showed you early on in the game. You can locate any resource that you need. So right now, I need fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and locate fuel. We need more leads for our scouts. And what you do is you contact the network, Lily and them. I've got people working on your oh, that's Red Talon actually hitting us up. And then it takes a couple seconds. Red Talon turned chaos into order. They saved a lot of lives. That okay. Counts, so you do pay for that. Now that says there is fuel in downtown Lowell. Okay. So that sucks. We just generated a fuel ruck and it spawned in a location that I do not want to go into. So you could go after this. I would advise you guys just let it be. Just let it go. Um, I think the fuel ruck stays there even after the mission goes away. The, it generated the ruck. The ruck's going to be there. But I, I, my honest opinion, guys, it's not worth pushing in there. I would just, I would rather just go back over here because downtown Lowell, there's a lot of storefronts here that spit out a lot of zombies. It's a lot of play cards that we got to go through. Um, it's just, it's just not it. Same thing. We got Mysterious Wandering Trade over here. As nice as it would be to trade with him, he's just in a spot that I'm not willing to really risk it for right now so we'll let those slide now these on enclave, this enclave here they want me to help them set up the still now i told you guys this is one of these story enclaves there's four or five different enclaves in the game that are story enclaves that you can cancel now this is the ma mission right here that you can cancel and you'll know because when you go and when you uh, when we go there it'll say on it if if you cancel this or canceling this will end their enclave storyline or whatever um and if you do that, what ends up happening is you wait about a day or so and the Enclave will reach out to you and say, hey, um, we are, we can't, we got pretty much our purpose is, is, is done. Uh, can we join you? And you get to recruit the whole entire Enclave at once, all three survivors. Now, I told you guys early on, if that is something that you are building up to do, make that sure you're, juggernaut is a nightmare. make sure you're prepared for it because that is a huge food loss that you're going to take now when i recruit these because that's what we're going to do we're going to we're going to cancel their thing we're going to we're going to go cert well first before i cancel their mission i'm going to check their skills i'm going to see if their survivors even worth taking um if they are we'll cancel it and it, say maybe one or two of them are somebody that we're, we're willing to take on I'll, I'll cancel it and then i'll kick the other two out or we can use them as play cart fodder which we'll get into because that's another thing to make you guys a little bit more comfortable with lethal zone i'm going to teach you guys uh about some play cart fodder but uh our fuel numbers aren't crazy crazy bad anymore to the point where i'm super worried about it uh that's why i, I wasn't pushing that ruck but other than that, yeah, our resources are good. Let's check our food outs real quick. So I want to make sure when the two food a day, yeah, we're doing we're doing well. We're doing really, really well right now. Um, we are still losing medicine. Uh, one of the ways you could shore up your medicine if you don't want to do a medicine outpost is you could plant a garden, and then you can switch the garden over to medicine. Now, right now, I don't have enough materials to build this. Well, I have just enough to build it. Um, so. I think I might actually focus on getting a little bit more materials out of the map right now. And uh, we're going to throw something in that third slot there. But as you can see, I'm, I'm searching the map right now. Really not a whole lot around when it comes to materials either. I'm starting. We're starting to drain this site or our, our starter area. It's, it's starting to get low on resources. So what I'm going to do here again, I got a bit of extra influence. So that's why I'm not stressing... Whoop, did not mean to do that. Hello there. Well, we got another enclave coming. That was a, that was a, uh, I fat fingered that, but what we're gonna do is I wanted to call in materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see where that enclave spawned in. Get on the horn and ask if anyone knows a good place to scavenge. All right, so we'll welcome them. I mean, it's not a bad thing necessarily, guys. Um, We've got people 
And the materials spawned right there too. Perfect. Without it, we're all dead. Uh, so, not necessarily a bad thing that we called in that enclave, um, because as you guys can see, we have a lot of trade partners now in this area, and they spawn right next to the materials, too, so that, that, that works. I'm not gonna say and act like that's what I intended to do, because it was 100% a mistake, but it's not the end of the world. It's, it's not, there's no negative side to having more trade partners, except it's more people you gotta kind of jump through hoops if you really care about maintaining a good relationship. Right on the edge of plague territory, so <clears throat> stirred the heart. There was a screaming to my left there, so that's why I buzzed on this way. Try to get close to the enclave as quick as possible. We're gonna have them help us if any zombies show up. Okay, so we gotta speak to LaForge. There we go, we got another trade partner. Hey there. Come on in and stay safe. So I wanna see what these guys have for sale. I'm on board with that. I will buy their repair kit, 100 <clears> percent <throat> I was thinking about maybe grabbing the materials and ammo. Um Let's see if we can get materials out of here. For now. But in plague territory, more Zeds are always close. Okay, so the materials did not spawn here. There's another site up here. Yep, so it's probably one of these two. Now my survivor does have uh, a curveball tied to him. We gotta we gotta activate that. See what it's gonna be. Uh, but the way to activate it is we have to switch off of him and then talk to him. Okay, so let's see if we can get in here. It's, yeah, that's locked. Yeah, it's locked. But we looted this place before and only had it had two things and we completely cleared it. So we're gonna knock this down. That was loud. Okay. Okay, scavenger hunt has ended. So, my people are no longer finding extra uh, resources. Okay, so nothing came in after making that noise. We got that zombie scurrying over here. That's what I'm looking there it for. is. Job's done. Time to head home. Uh, so we got a food curveball going active. The bait crate. Now, I think Undead Labs buffed this curveball because before it was not worth it, guys. This one acts as one of the old Cleo drops from State of Decay 1, which it's, it's going to be a crate that spawns on the map. Let's see if we can locate where it is. I don't know if it, is it not active yet? Let me check. I don't think it's active yet. 
No, it's act. Oh, it's upcoming. So once that goes live, there's going to be a crate that spawns on the map, and it makes a bunch of noise and lures a bunch of zombies. Depending on where it spawns, um, it, it it was not worth it, guys. It, it just calls in tons of zombies. You got to fight a bunch of shit off, get up to the crate, deactivate the alarm, and I got some freaking snacks out of it. It was it was depressing to say the least. So definitely not worth it in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna trade them. Let's make a deal. Sure. Grab their materials. So yeah, when you're early game lethal like this, guys, there's nothing wrong with uh, trading. You know, having a bunch of trade partners, it helps offset the uh, resource scarcity in lethal zone. It gives you more places to get them from that are within, you know. I could probably survive just off of my enclaves now. Um, okay, so that let's see where that dropped. Over here. Definitely not worth it. That's across the map, dude. Um, and I could grab bullets off of them nice too, to because there isn't a whole lot of ammo okay. on the map. And uh, we got to swap out our survivor. All right, so let's get him home. Um, we're going to swap survivors, activate the curveball, and then we'll come over and uh, check them their skills out and see if they're worth recruiting because we are getting to the point where we want to build up, make our community nice and big. Now, uh, my go-to community size for a State of Decay playthrough, um, and when I, it depends on what my goal for that community is uh, or the playthrough. If I'm just trying to beat Lethal Zone, I generally aim for about a six, oh, so we know there was a Screamer down that way, so we're going to avoid that way. Um, I generally aim for about a six survivor um, size community. It's about my comfort, because that's more than enough. You can get the traits and skills you need um, out of six survivors, and you don't have to worry about feeding the Brady Bunch, you know what I mean? Okay, we're swimming in resources right now, guys. You see, we're, we're taking our time, we're looting, and you can see we're actually building up. You know what I mean? Which a lot of people, hey guys, I've I'm seen people back. say, dude, I'm going out, I'm looting, and my numbers are just, it's because of what we talked about in those earlier episodes about you're probably getting in too many fights, you're spending too many resources. Okay, so we'll top off this. I'm on my last mag here. Okay, so we'll grab Wes. See what this curveball is all about. Uh, some of these zombies are physically weaker. It's made uh, living in the apocalypse much safer. Boom. Okay, so this is going to make the zombies fragile. Uh, don't know what AO that's going to pop up in, so we'll have to see. Soft skins. Screamer. Okay, so we're going to be pushing down here. We're going to see what uh, the Enclave has to offer. But I want to scan. Okay, I think it's three Screamers, actually. So I noticed a horde outside my base here. Three Screamers. Yep. Um, They seem to be patrolling, so we don't have to worry about them too, too much. Uh, but now that we're sitting on 23 mats, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll build this garden for right now. And I'm going to switch it over to medicine uh, to help curb our medicine loss a little bit.
<clears throat> so heading over here, things we got to take into consideration. This play card's been stirred uh, by Screamer. I can see Screamers on the road here, and a lot of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down. I'm actually going to swing around this backside and come up this way. Uh, to try to avoid setting these screamers off because I, I don't want to wake this play card up. So we're kind of just doing a little bit of route planning before heading out. Okay, so soft skins. Wow, that's in my AO, dude. Nice. So that means all the zombies around are, are, um, are going to be, well, some of the zombies in this area are going to be really, really easy to kill. They're vulnerable to melee. Um, they do less damage to vehicles. Higher crossbow rec bolt recovery. That's nice. Could take advantage of that. Go around looting and shit. But. It's going to be the ones with the blue eyes. Okay, where the hell are the train tracks? I think they're down this way. So we're going wide around those screamers. There's the train tracks. I don't even want to know what makes the air taste so bad. Now again, the zombies aren't a big deal because we can just drag the zombies into the enclave. We're just making sure there's no screamers. All right, same thing as before. We got a lot of zombies showing up now. Come in here, let the Enclave do the thing. Score one for me. All right, so we're gonna, uh, our main goal here is to check it. Now I know some of you guys are like, damn dude, like, uh, because you're not, we're not fighting the zombies. We're having the Enclave do it. We're not, fight, we're not avoid fighting the zombies because we're like scared of the zombies. It's more or less, we are, we just don't want to wake up a play cart and this is the stuff, unfortunately, that you have to do to avoid waking up play cards because the play cards are so sensitive and lethal. It doesn't take much. If you sit there and you get in one fight with a horde, boom, you'll wake up. I, and I've done it accidentally, like just getting a little carried away. I uh, have like eight or nine zombies come up on me and you end up killing them, throw a molly or something out of, uh, out of the end, boom, you woke up a play card. So it's just small things like this that keep your map under control and I, i've had people in the comments already saying you know damn dude like i'm having such a hard time keeping the play cards asleep hey, and it's, it's just small things like that so first of all let's see I what they have for sale trade. 12 mollies why not it's a little expensive though 300 influence is not not about that life um but let's check Congrats. their skills you're still alive so bartending not so interested in that i'm looking for a chemist Take it easy. Yeah, so I can't see her. Hey. And then Ian here. Bartending. So, two out of three of them are bartending. I wish I could see what hers was. Hmm. So seeing as two out of three are people I don't really want to recruit, I'm not going to waste my time pulling this enclave in just to get rid of them, uh, like kick them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to keep their mission set going, um, and we'll just let them build up and be an enclave on the map that we could trade with. Uh, they're a good enclave because they do uh, have a lot of uh, high trade items, things like that. They you can get ethanol and shit from them later on. So they're a decent enclave to have around. So let's see. What a beer in the morning is the best way to survive the apocalypse, don't you think? 
Okay, so let's see. Where do they oh, want to go? I'm not sure. Beautiful. So she wants to travel up here to do the mission. Now, d depending on missions, when you start doing missions for enclaves that require you to go somewhere and do something, not just bring them resources, you have to assess where the mission is. Now, depending on where this mission took place, I would have decided not to do it. I'd be like, no, nah, it's, it's just not worth it. It is what it is. Now, if it's a very important enclave to you, like very important, obviously you do what you gotta do. Now I'm looking, okay, this is right next to one of my outposts, outside of plague territory, in a zone where the zombies are more fragile. Of course, we're gonna do this mission. All right, so let's, uh, let's head out. The most dangerous thing with operating with this enclave is getting in and out of this location. Too many zombies headed this way fast. Screamer down there on the left. So you can see the hordes are starting to pick up a little bit. The zombie density is starting to get a little bit thicker. And it's only going to get worse. Not Feral should not follow us all the way up here. It's way too far. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm not feeling too good. Yo, you okay? Did you get bit by a plague zombie? Yeah, they're dying super easy to melee. Okay, we got a horde on this backside that's coming. Barrel. So, same thing, guys. We want the Feral 1v1. Okay, so we dodge him, ready. work on the zombies. Now we can focus on the Feral. Same thing I showed you before, make your space. Take the headshot. Now I, I could do the back to back shots, but I'm trying to show you guys how to just do the one, one, uh, the single shots. Zombie zombies are very, very tanky, so it's good to just throw them on the ground and... Now that horde showed up, I... Now, one of the things um, I would advise you guys to carry on you, especially if you know that you're gonna... You might be getting into combat, is fire. Uh, you guys see I got some mollies on me right there. Um, how I assess that situation is the Feral came out. I knew I wanted the Feral 1v1 because if I would have tried to fight the feral while all those zombies are swarming you, you're gonna run into some issues. So you wanna whittle away the zombies because they're easier to kill. I seen the bloater standing there, I seen the zombies bunched up, so I whipped a molly over there. Killed probably about four or five of them. There was a couple stragglers left, I dodged the feral. As I'm dodging the feral, instead of locking on and lining up on the feral, I would just lock on one zombie, boom, take a shot. Um, but if you're not hitting your shots, you just keep moving. Dodge the feral and just wait till you line up on that zombie. And then, boom, I took out the zombies, got the feral 1v1, dealt with him, and then I go back to kind of working clean up here. Now we got that screamer, nail him so that he doesn't call anybody else in. Yo, bloater here. All right, so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Not feeling too good. Warm beer, you know. So she's hung over. Came out on a mission with us. Um, what the hell's the matter I'll with you? Find then? something to eat. I'm gonna lose it. Okay, so we gotta go loot the parts for the still. We've got zombies coming. <laughs> Yes. 
Okay, so it gives her the parts. Um, I'll let you know when we got the still set up. Here you go. Maybe lay off the booze next time we go on a life-threatening mission together. You need to get your shit together. You could have got me killed. We'll be, we'll be a little hard on her. Hi. Not that she cares, obviously. Alright, so we got some influence. We don't got to drive her back home, which is nice. Um, because that would suck having to bring her back down into that cesspool down there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the house. I'm going to assess. And now we come up with our next game plan. And that's what you got to do periodically, guys. It's like once, you, once you're done with something, you don't know exactly what you're, what you're going to do next. You kind of go, you look at your resources, say, okay, we don't need anything. I would like to get that other car, but we don't need to bring it to this base. That there are all casinos from corpses and all that money just lying around. True, dude. Okay, um, so our garden's gonna be done in a minute, and uh, we're gonna I hope that wasn't the last place in town with any fuel left. Uh, so we, we found that mission that we called in. Um, no enclaves want anything, which is cool. We do have this mysterious broadcast. Which is in a crappy spot. Um, I am kind of intrigued to see what it is, though. Uh, because there's a few mysterious broadcast missions that can be very, very beneficial to you and your community. One of them being the crossbow killer mission. Um, that can be very, very beneficial to you and your community. To get you a repeating crossbow. Um, very, very good. But. I don't. Uh, I think we can get in there without any issues, guys, because we can park on the bridge. There's no play carts in this area. It's impossible. The the territory could come could couldn't come to the bridge here, but this area here is relatively safe. We can park. We can walk up there. So I think that's what we're gonna do right now. We'll start that because it, it is it is low risk, lower risk due to the location of the building. Or yeah, location of where the person's at. So we got a little bit of fire. Um, we got stamina. We got health. We got bullets. Make sure the car is fueled up. It's got plenty of fuel. Trunk's empty. Let's do it. Of plague zombies around here so this goes to show you guys there's a time and a place for missions early in the game i you, 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 a lot of you guys probably notice i ignore a lot of missions early on because i have my own priorities uh squaring away our resources but like i was showing you guys there is a moment where once you get your stuff taken care i i've been doing tons of missions and some of these missions are very very beneficial you know what i mean but it when you try to juggle or take on and do too many things at once that's where you can really start struggling in state of decay um so that's why I, I i try to stress to you guys take your time don't try to force you know um doing too much early on now i don't want to get too close because i know that's all in plague territory so we're gonna park our car here this is outside of plague territory so we can kill zombies Okay, so they need some food. That enclave that we accidentally called in. We get them food, and they're gonna become, uh, we'll have another ally. And those ally bonuses, do they do build up, Chad. Sometimes you get some really good ones. Um, and they do stack up if you get enough uh, enclaves on your map. 
So yeah, this is going to be ter plague territory here. Deal with this guy. Uh, but I try to let people know, like, you know, the guide does seem a little kind of... And, and initially, like, dude, what can I... All I'm doing is sneaking around everywhere. Like, I, I, you're not letting me do missions. You're not letting me um, do this, do that. You know what I mean? And you will eventually be able to do all of that stuff. It's just... You just got to be a little patient. You know what I mean? Just be a little patient. All quiet. And at least as quiet as it can get this close to a play card. Build up properly and you'll be able to do all the stuff you want to do in the game. But you'll just be able to do it very, very efficiently and very, very effectively. Yeah, as you guys can see, a lot of zombies here. But just moving low and slow. That's why we parked over there. Now, if I would have drove over this way... Yeah, we would have we would have had a lot of a lot of zombies to fight. Now is this guy up on top? What the hell? Single must have been delayed, but there's nothing here. It must be somewhere in bared blood. I what fucking mission is this? I've never seen this mission before. Big nasty horde right there. Okay. Then. Search and retrieve the contents of the Cleo drop in the area. So I think this is the Cleo drop. Which is cool because I'll just drive back down the road and we'll, we'll head over there. We're about to find out together, guys. Somebody in the comments was saying something about this mission, I think. And I was confused on what the hell they were talking about because I've never heard what they were trying to describe to me. Which goes to show, even having over 6,000 hours in this game like I do, there's still things you're going to see and you're like, what the hell is this? I'm just going to grab this on my way out just because it's here. Got a water cooler. We can install that in our garden. Oh, our garden, which is now done. We're going to switch it to medical. Uh, now, you do need a gardener. One of the good reasons why we have a gardener. Uh, to actually do the switch, you need a gardener. Once you do the switch, you can get rid of the gardener. It doesn't matter. Uh, but you just need him to do the switch. But I also think you need a gardener for a level two, right? No, you just need water. So we'll be able to get this medical garden upgraded with water. And uh, it should help us with our meds. We got outposts right now generating food. Okay, so let's go, uh, let's go check out this Cleo drop. I might have got this mission before, it's just slipping my mind. But, um, yeah, this is not what I've gotten. If I have gotten it, less than a handful of times. Maybe once. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments if you've gotten this mission before. I mean, if I'm being honest with you guys, I also avoid doing a lot of missions. I'm trying to follow the water line here. So this is kind of where the Cleo drop is. I've never drove this water line before. I've never even seen that area up there. Yo, we're discovering all types of stuff today, chat. What the hell? One of my favorite maps. I didn't even know you could come up here, dude. Not that there's anything up here. Barrel's dead, but I literally just did the most damage to my car. Okay. So as you guys can see, off-roading here is not the greatest idea. What I'm going to do, we're going to park down here on the water. I'm going to run this way because what my plan is I want to lose these zombies that are on my tail. So we'll run this way. We'll swing around here. Try to break that line of sight. 
crouch. And they should get wrapped around and, and lose me for the most part. Your car's right there. Cleo drops right over here. Now, is this thing making noise? It is making noise. Now, I would have driven closer, but as you guys can see, this whole entire mountain edge here is... It's impassable with the car for the most part. But 300 meters on foot... It's a little sketch. Yep, there it is. Definitely a Cleo drop. Okay, but there's a lot of zombies in between me and them. Or that area. Uh, I try to get up there quietly. Now, the problem is, is there's a ton of zombies at this drop. If I throw a Molotov, it's going to do... It's, it, it's, I think it's still going to count towards waking up the play card. Even if I throw the Molotov and, not, and I'm not noticed... But it kind of depends on how many zombies are here. Now this is borderline chat. Honestly, I'll see what's in this drop if if it's smart to even go inside. If once we see what's actually up here, but this is one of those borderline things. I I don't know if this is worth you guys doing. Kind of just depends on what the hell's in this drop. Will dictate. If you get the one of these missions in Lethal Zone, should you do it? Okay, so it is making a little bit of noise, but it's actually not calling in too much. There's nothing really up here. These must be new, man. Contact with Cleo inactive. Echo Lab freight protocol activated. Echo S7 assault rifle. One advanced break, one Echo Lab melee weapon, ammo, and one gambler. Hat. This is this is newer, dude. There's no way. Cause the gambler hat wasn't in the game. What's the gambler hat? Yeah, that's new, dude. So these these missions have to be new. They they have to be. Not gonna lie though, we got a nasty, nasty rifle. These are the echo weapons. A fine performance, to be sure. Many thanks. Uh, these echo weapons are really good guns. Um, yeah, that made a lot of noise. They're really, really good guns. They're integratedly suppressed. Uh, definitely worth getting your hands on. But yeah, I didn't. I've never seen these mission, this mission set before. If it's not new. It's it's rare. Okay, so also up here um, on the map, I just in this area there's a um, hidden weapon case. So just I was just getting it because we we're here. Now we got to make the long trek back down the river to my car. 
Oh, nice. We got a King Vulture 44. Not really the greatest uh, gun because it can't be suppressed. Now, as you guys can Don't see here, my inventory is full. Uh, but I want these bullets. This note, really not that big of a deal. We'll just drop that, swap it out for the bullets. Yeah, see, this is a crappy spot. We could have parked, like, down on that side and walked up. But either way, we would have still had a parked and walked. Okay. Bro, if you don't get not... I, I don't want to go that way. <laughs> oh, well, we're going that way. Yeah, well, okay, yep, no, fuck. There it is. Oh, we didn't get hurt. <laughs> we didn't get hurt, dude. Now, first things first, um, with this rifle here... It has three different fire modes. You can have it on full. It comes full auto, so make sure when you get the gun, you check it. Around here for very long. Uh, it has, but I'd put it on single fire. Uh, but I actually have a decent bit of five, five, six um, ammunition. Even back at base, we got a little bit. Now, we got to be careful because I do have mollies on me for fire, but fire actually doesn't work in water in State of Decay. Yo. Uh, if you were to throw a Molotov down here, it would it would just fizzle out. It wouldn't do anything. So anytime you go to an area that has water on the ground, uh, definitely be careful. Nice. Three meds? That was a monster find right there. Low and slow, baby. If we had a crossbow, the amount of shooting we'd be able to do would be a little bit more forgiving because you could let the crossbow off and it doesn't make any noise. Compared to these guns, like, yeah, they're suppressed, but they still make quite a bit of noise, so... So we'll go up here. No, no, we'll, we'll wrap back around the way we came down. So we should be able to get to our car without any issues. So yeah, um, if you do get that mission, I would definitely say consider checking it out, but consider where the mission is located and how much you have to risk going after it. As you can see right there, as long as you take it low and slow, I was able to go into plague territory, but it was it was in a pretty chill area. It was in like the middle of a town or something. So I would definitely say if you get that mission, worth doing. We got a really, really great weapon from it. And um, those guns are really rare. They're, they're, they're generally, you yeah, they must have just implemented that because the only way to get the echo guns in the game was from Heartland or the Trumbull Valley Trader um, bounty. So now you can just get those echo guns free and clear, like in the base game, which is really, really cool. So yeah, those missions are new. They have to be. Now, the one weapon that you really want to get your hands on, the Echo-wise, is the crossbow. The Echo crossbow, so good. Uh, if we do get a chance to get one of those, I'll definitely... Dangerous outlaws are passing through, causing trouble, looting all the resources. Someone needs to deal with them.
High chance to fail a fast search. Higher prices, less influence received from selling. Okay, so we got outlaws in the AO right now, um, putting some pressure on us. We'll go get inside the base. You know accessorizing didn't mean your choice of weapons. Now, human enemies. I don't want that screamer blowing chunks on me. Are very very dangerous to deal with in uh, in lethal zone. Very very dangerous. Uh, I gotta assess this. Let's check this curveball. Outlaws passing through. So, a bunch of outlaws with a bounty on their heads are held up nearby. Red Talon wants us to deal with them before they move on. Um, they have some of these boxes and containers have already been rummaged through by scavengers. There's a high chance that performing a fast search could result in a crash. So, if you're a fast searcher, they'll make your crashes more consistent. Uh, higher influence prices for buying. Slightly more influence to buy these uh buy items from enclave members so if we want to go do some trading and so right now because this uh these outlaws are in the area people are charging more and less influence received from selling so if we want to go sell stuff right now we're going to be getting way less um so optional objective is to find out where they are search the location for signs of them and then the actual objective is the outlaws are picking the area location clean uh, we can reclaim some supplies if we go after them So, you see the location, the area they're in, guys? It, it, going after them would be dangerous, mainly because they're, they're human enemies. Now, one of the things is I do have... I, I would take, like, this rifle or my other 5.56 five, rifle. I would say those are viable guns for fighting humans. We do have a decent bit of 5.56, five, so we could put some pressure on them if we really, really w wanted to. Um, <clears throat> but It'd be nice to have more hands to help around here. I don't know how long they're going to be hanging around for, so they want food. I'm got, your way now. Let's go give this enclave food real quick. Now, I could give them a bag out of my supply, or I could try to loot some, but there isn't any food in the area, so we'll just have to give them some from ours. Uh, but we have to assess, is this really worth the fight? Um, pushing up into this area. Where they potentially are is kind of out of the way. But we would definitely have to drive through plague territory, significant plague territory to get there. There's a good chance this house has a plague heart in it. Um so I'm going to be honest with you guys, not worth it. I would just ride out the curveball and just wait for them to leave um, and don't sell or buy anything until, until, until they're out of here because it's just, it's a very high risk early game right now. You're new to leave the zone. I, I, I would not, I wouldn't push it. And not just for the humans, like, it's for everything. It, it, waking up a play cart over there. Um, barrels, like, they're, they're, you know, all types of problems that could arise from going over there and trying to pull that off. All right, let's fix up our car, fuel up. We will get to a certain point. Uh, in the playthrough where when stuff like that does pop up, we can easily jump on it and take care of it. But as of right now, it's, it's definitely something that you should stay away from those kind of missions.
got some zombies nearby. Look alive, kids. We got a loader here. Got him. That cloud looks nasty. So I'm just letting them do their thing. There you go, brother. All right, let's see what the enclave bonus we get here is. Uh, parts income. Nice. I don't know how much parts. So parts income and wick to XP. So if you want to check what your incomes are, you come here and we're getting 25 parts a day from them. Doesn't sound like much, but hey, it builds up, guys. It builds up over time. You know what I mean? Okay, so right now we're losing one meta a day. Uh, we're gonna we're do a little bit of management on this garden. Uh, we'll throw the water in here. Once that's installed, we get it turned on, and then we can upgrade that to a level two. Okay, success here, guys. Um, enclaves are looking good. Um, two traders that we're not really all that concerned with. We got this curveball that I told you guys really not worth pre putting pressure on right now because it's just it's gonna uh, it's gonna you're risking more. Uh, messing with that than anything uh, resources are looking good um, so I think it's about time that we consider scouting out our next play cart that we want to deal with now these two they don't look like they're overlapping this one is kind of up here I think this should be the one we take out uh, it'll make it so the area but where our um, our enclaves are up here will be a little easier to get to. It's it's definitely solo. It's on its own. Uh, it'll free up some houses up here that we can loot. And then we'll leave these two to kind of when we start pushing inland. So I think this one here should be our next target. So we're gonna head back to base. We're gonna look at our supplies, see what we're dealing, what, what we have. I don't want to stick around here for very long. And come up with a game plan on how to attack this next play heart. Now, obviously, these play cards here will be really nice to get rid of because they'll just make driving back in and out of my town easy. No, stay. Can't get too wide. Heart might wake up. Stirred. Okay. Play card only stirred. Woo. So our area avoidance, like when a heart does get stirred, avoiding that area for a while, like you can see staying out of there 15, 20, 30 minutes, um, has definitely been helping. Just got to remember, keep that mental note. We stirred that play card. Over here now now we got to stay away from over there go back to going wide but now we're about to head up here so it doesn't really matter all right let's go look at our locker let's see what we're working with for resources okay now We got fire, got a little bit of explosives. We still have a smoke grenade left. We got plenty of stamina items that we've been building up. Um, yeah, we're good, guys. We got we got enough. We got enough to uh, go take on this this play cart. Uh, like I told you. Try to get comfortable integrating a, just a tiny bit of melee like we did on that first phase by clearing out the building. One thing I really wish I could get my hands on would be a crossbow, but um, we're going to swap out survivors here. This is our beast of a survivor. Now, he has a bunch of 5.56 in this rifle here. 
We're going to go ahead and strip that ammo out. Honestly, this rifle probably would be the better option um, than this one just because the ammo capacity is higher. So you won't have to carry as much ammo in your bag and free up the inventory slot. Um, so honestly, this one would be probably a bit smarter to use than this one. But this one has a suppressor built into it. But what we're going to do is we'll take our advanced suppressor back off this. We'll throw it back on this rifle. I'm actually going to strip this one of its ammo. Grab all the stamina items we're going to need. So, say six energy drinks should be more than enough. Grab good heals. Okay, so you want to make sure you have stamina heals. Uh, we're going to focus on our bullets real quick. Now, bullets in the play carts... Your bullets are not for the zombies, guys. The main reason why you're carrying a gun with you in a play cart at, at all has, is just for ferals. The zombies, you want to whittle them down because they're going to bunch up. You just want to whittle them down with uh, with fire, if possible. Uh, but I do like to... This is more than enough ammo for ferals. As you can see, we got 51 rounds there, 16 rounds here. I do want to suppress this handgun. So we'll throw that back on there. We also just seen that this got finished. Our, our water is installed, so we'll get that turned on. <coughs> okay. And then, uh, obviously, if we wanted to upgrade this, we, we could, but we need more materials right now. But that'll be the focal point for later on. So we got bullets. I'm going to swap out this melee weapon for something uh, heavy variety. So we'll grab the sledgy. And then we're going to grab our ordnance. So smoke grenade, uh, fire, definitely want fire. Uh, we can grab that barrel charges me. I'm in trouble. Grab some explosives. And that should be good. That's, that's, that's quite a bit of ordnance, guys. So the fire, uh, it's behind me. Um, the, 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 the fire here is for the zombies. And then the explosives are going to be used for the, like, middle of the play cart. Um, probably, like, phase two when I'm trying to stay away from it. Uh, stamina items, like I told you, your, your goal is to stay on the move. Keep moving. Go fast, 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 fast. Um... And it's more of a hit and run style. That's what you kind of want to adopt in Lethal Zone is that hit and run style on play cards. Now, one thing is, depending on what the zombie situation is looking like there, I am going to bring another melee weapon because fighting zombies with a heavy weapon is not that great early on, especially when you don't have um, the powerhouse skill. So using the heavy weapons in combat down. is kind of inefficient. So I like to bring a backup melee weapon just because I actually want to melee down the zombies. Okay, so I know this building location. It's in a barn. Uh, we were here before. We did some looting here. We know what the layout is. Big open area. Um, we could park here at the Enclave. So remember... These are things I want you to take into consideration. Start thinking in your own map. Like, these are just ideas of things you could think of. Okay, I'm going to clear this play cart. I have an enclave here. So if I got, if I did, let's say, get super, super overwhelmed, I could, at worst case scenario, pull back into this enclave and then have the enclave help me clear the play cart. You technically could come over here, recruit one of these survivors to follow you into the play cart to help fight, but they be, they kind of get chewed up real bad when you do that. They don't really help. I mean, they do because they, they're kind of a distraction, but if it's an enclave that you don't want to die, uh, I wouldn't advise you to do that. But if it is an enclave that you don't really care about, you can recruit one of their members to follow you. You go to a play cart and they do act as bait. Some of the zombies, ferals and stuff will focus on them while you're kind of doing your thing. So if that's something you want to implement into your strategy, go for it. Um, I'm kind of liking my allies right now. Uh, so we're going to keep them alive. <laughs> but one of the things is the play cart is under the effects of this curveball. So let's, let, let's hurry up and get over there before that, that goes away. So the zombies should be uh, a bit weaker to melee too.
Now, because we're driving in and we're going to be fighting the heart, um, if it wakes up, it's irrelevant. It's going to stir it. We're gonna park here. Just gonna wake it up. Nope. Now I like to park my car in a location where if I do have to make a getaway, I can. Uh, so if, if I got overwhelmed, I could easily run back to my car. I can run back to that enclave. Um, you know, we got strat. Now, the thing with this building, too, is uh, if you get pressured really, really bad here, guys, um, this play card building is actually pretty nice because you can climb that ladder there and the zombies can't get you. And you can kind of throw fire down. You can throw explosives down at the play cart. Um, and you don't have to worry. No, we could. So we're going to work on clearing these guys out. Two for one. All this weight's gonna okay. So the heart's awake, but it doesn't matter because we're killing it anyways. Uh, but like I told you, we're going around just kind of clearing out the zombies before hitting the heart because once you hit the heart, it, it's, it aggros up the waves. So right now we got that nice one-on-one -on -one time with the play card that I tell you guys to strive for. Now what I'm going to do here is here for a job. Time to do it. you can, uh, like I said, you can go ahead, you can start hitting the play card, then you can run to this ladder, you get up top here, and now none of the zombies can get you. And you can actually throw explosives and stuff down at it. Or you can just stand up here and do the whole play cart if you really want it to be. You can stand up here, shoot it, throw explosives, throw fire until it dies. And you're good. You'll be safe up here. The only thing, if the bloater explodes on there, the smoke might be able to reach up to you. You can walk up on that top platform there. But yeah, you could stand up here and, and do a lot of work to this play cart without worrying about uh, anything. Now, the only problem is getting out. After the play card's done, the zombies are still going to be here. So make sure you save something to clear out the horde that's going to build up down below you. But let's go ahead. We'll switch yeah, to this. Slow me down. Stamina item. I can't keep fighting. Okay. You're able to get it. Remember, move fast, move fast. Time now to we put him away. Barrels here. So I'm gonna throw fire. fire One shot on the feral. Dodge the feral. Burn the zombies. The Hit the head. feral. Take out said feral. Now I'm gonna throw some of these explosives. Definitely hurt it. Get up here, we'll throw them explosives like I showed you guys. Got another feral. Okay, I think it's on the ropes. The play card's really almost weak, so what we're gonna do is pop that the stamina items. You keep moving fast, guys. Keep moving fast. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in here, we're gonna hit it a couple times with our melee weapon. There it is. Get back out here, move fast. Screamer. All right, now I'm gonna finish this off. We got that smoke grenade. You gotta give the play card about 10, 15 seconds to clear out the gas. When you come, you drop the smoke grenade, and now you're just chilling. There it is. 
Now we got these zombies left over here that we need to kill. Kill them in the smoke. There it is. So the whole goal with the play cards, guys, is um, that's why I tell you stamina is king. You, you're just popping stamina items and you're just moving. You're just not stopping. You're, you, you, it's a very, very hit and run strat. You see how I kept going around. I stretch the zombies out, keep them going, dodge the feral, like come in, do a little bit of damage, keep it moving, keep running. And then when you when you do get bunched up, you know, and the feral's on you, and you're like, okay, I need to take care of this feral. Um, you use the fire to whittle away the hordes of zombies, and then you try to get that 1v1 with the feral, like I told you guys. All right, but all these are dead. Uh, nice, got some pretty decent stuff in here. So let's go grab the car, bring it up here, and we'll load it up. Screamer. I thought I heard a screamer. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll get this looted out. Got some samples. Now that's quite a load. Civilian. So some decent play cart loot. Uh, nothing crazy, but it, it was decent enough. We got an MP5 or a civilian MP5, which is a decent primary weapon, especially if you want to run like a full nine millimeter build. Um, they're pretty good. But as you can see, now this whole entire area has been liberated of plague. We don't have to stress at all. Um, closest plague territory is down that way now. Yeah, now it's going to take a little bit of practice, like I said, uh, with the play cards, guys. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you other means um, later on in the game that, that make it a bit easier. But like I said, if there, I showed you plenty of different ways there that you could have taken out that play card. You know, standing on top there and just kind of throwing shit down doesn't really require much. You know, you're just standing there. Make sure you get good angles. You've seen I did the middle phase like that. Uh, but it does take a lot of resources if you want to play like that because you're going to have to throw tons and tons of explosive stuff. So that 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 style is, is more expensive. It's going to be harder to upkeep. You're going to have bigger gaps in between the play cards because you're going to have to keep building up a ton of resources in order to generate, you know, all those explosives and things. Now, granted, as you get, if you get more advanced, um, explosives like pipe bombs are pretty decent compared to you know the soda can bombs you know what i mean like soda can bombs you could whip fucking 100 of these things at it and it's it, before it dies you know so these are a bit more effective um but it, it's still a lot of resources that you gotta you gotta prepare to spend and um the melee just kind of makes it a bit cheaper that's why um and it's just as effective in my opinion so if 
If you're not comfortable with the melee uh, practice, like I said, maybe just do one phase or half a phase or whatever. Just pop in those stamina items, running around, getting used to keeping that speed and momentum going. Um, you know, just run, get a couple hits on. Even if, But once you do, if you've seen there, generally, if you clear out the play cart site before the heart makes the noise and calls on the hordes, you can usually get the full first phase done before the zombies are on top of you. Sometimes you might be short a swing or two, which is fine. Just start running, make that space, lap around, come back, get your next two hits in, then start running. Uh, but you've got to make sure if you are going to use that hit and run play style that you have stamina items. That is the main requirement for that play style. Um, and then if you want to do the uh, smoke grenades, obviously those are a bit harder to get on this map. There is a map in the game where you can craft smoke grenades on Meager Valley. Meager Valley. Uh, you can go ahead and craft them in a police station. That's the only guaranteed way to get smoke uh, grenades. Uh, you can loot them, obviously, but when you get your hands on those smoke grenades, make sure you cherish them because, as you guys can see, they are very, very, very powerful. All right, let's get this stuff stored. Here you go. Going our way, aren't they? No, yeah, it's 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 everything's going okay. We got influence, we got parts, we got resources, our numbers are looking great, our map is looking a bit peaceful. Uh so what our game plan is now, guys, because I did just blow through a decent bit of resources. Um as you can see, I got a bit of fire left, but now if I were to try to take on another play cart, we would have to rely mostly on melee at that point. And uh like I said, I, I'm not going to try to do that type of stuff to you guys because I know that's not a lot of you guys, especially being new, new to Lethal Zone, aren't going to be able to just stick to that melee only play style. Um, right now, I just want you guys to focus on integrating a little bit of it into your every heart you do, just a little bit. And as you get better and better at it, start doing more. Okay, I, I'll do one full phase. Um, of melee and then the rest I'll do this and then maybe do two phases and then you know work your way up uh, eventually yeah you want to get to the point where you can just do all three phases in melee um because it's the cheapest the easiest the fastest with tons of stamina items you could blitz it no problem but um now we need to go out we got to build up some resources uh to try and get some other stuff to hit this play cart with so next episode, we're going to go around. We're going to loot up. I want to try to see if we can maybe get lucky, find some smoke grenades, um, any, any, anything. Uh, so we're going to hit all these little sites here, these little knickknack sites. Now that this is, area is clean, we're going to hit all this. We're going to clear this full area here of all the loot that we can find. We'll see what we get from that. And then we'll come up with a game plan from there. We're also make sure you're, we'll hit our, we're on our enclaves. We'll start trading up with them. But once we get this area, the map under control, guys, you see we have a lot of power in this area. Once these two play cards are gone and this is our territory, we have tons of uh, trade partners all within this nice little tight pocket making rounds, trading with them. Super, super easy. So this is, we built, we're building a nice stronghold right here on the, in this little corner of the map. And, uh, we just got to keep it going. We just got to keep it going. So, again, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Even if, you know, you're not watching. I had some people saying, you know, I'm not even watching it for the guide. I'm just watching it because it's a good State of K series. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, seriously. I um, hope you guys are learning something uh, every episode, at least a little bit. And uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Uh, if you guys got questions, ask them in the comments. Um, if you guys bring up something, uh, I'll try to address it in the future episodes as I get to a lot. There is a lot of comments. There's a lot of stuff that people bring up. Uh, I try to touch on as much as I can. But, um, yeah, thank you guys again. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.